Well, good morning. I Rapstein, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And what another day. Okay, it's another day of a stock market game. You know, the more I think about it, every day is a day of a stock market game. Doesn't it seem like that? It's pretty crazy. And yeah, it's uh, it, right now, what is it? It's uh, getting on to 6 15 p.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time. I got to get used to saying that one. And um, we are on the 13th of March, 2024. And I'm just thinking all the things you hear during the day. You know, in the background, I like to listen. Bloomberg and uh, CNBC are my, my two favorites that I watch all the time. And as I, re, as I, as I just keep listening, you use, they use the word broadening. Everybody's buying everything, just so you know. I mean, it's now because you're only up a couple of percentage points in the Russell, those have become the new favorites in the market. So that's where people are going. Well, there's a reason they've been down. And people think that because the market has so much pull and gravity and I can't argue this part, the next moves by most major central banks will likely be to the downside, not to the upside, barring some shock that happens, that those companies stand to benefit down the road. Well, down the road is the right word, but people are so desperate for the next thing. And I think you realize that, that they're just buying anything in sight. I mean, Tesla, look how far down that has gone. If you really look at, uh, Apple, look what it's done. Google's gone nowhere this year. But the commodities are suddenly coming alive. You're now talking, how high do we get gold up? Can it get up to the 2300 level? 2200's right around the corner from the looks of it. Silver market's back to $25. The copper surprised the heck out of me today how easy it got over $4 a pound. I'm not bearish, I'm, I'm friendly to these markets. But how easy the market was able to do that. So a big surprise. Dollar's still down, and here's the problem. You know, let's assume that we get the PPI tomorrow and it's a friendly number. It doesn't have uh, the, the shelter costs, which weigh on on the uh, CPI about a third of that value. It's really heavily weighted. Remove that, what are we going to see? Now, could there be a surprise and it's an up number? Well, that would be, I think, a surprise. But every break in the stock market is just a buying opportunity for the naysayers. That, that's what you see. I, I don't, not knocking it. They have been right, the market. Energy markets, uh, that's a next play. Why not? If everybody, and I use the word all the major central banks being everybody, are considering when, not not the exact month, but when can they start cutting rates? Well, people don't wait for that to happen. They anticipate what's the effect of the cut going to be. So that's what you're working into these markets. I was listening today to the bulls that were calling for the 5,200 market uh, year end in the S&P. Now they're raising it because you're there. And by the way, I have gone to the Junes. Uh, so please understand, uh, it's time to make your switch. But now they're talking 5,400, of course they will. They'll be at 6,000 if the market keeps going like this. That's just how these things work. When you take a weekly chart of just closing prices, you're at 5,171. I do this because it smooths things out. And smoothing out is very important. This has been a trajectory that hasn't stopped since late October, and the market has just been go, go, go. There are no major corrections in the market. Those that have sold out looking for the corrections, they have been left behind. If you take a look at how the market in the June S&P, now this is brand new, it's still higher lows, higher highs, bullish. The support in the market back at the 51, 70 and a half zone. The resistance likely the upper Bollinger Band now, 52.75. And momentum, well, do we have an embedded reading? We haven't looked at this together because I just brought it up. So let's go to yesterday, Wednesday. I know today's Wednesday, but we're already in Thursday trade. Both numbers definitely were over the 80 level. On Tuesday, both were over the 80, but not the case the day before. So the market is not yet embedded. It can do that tomorrow. There's no magic to it. What happens with embedded is you move a market away from being overbought to locking in another phase of the bull trend. And what it keeps in place 
is this, the buying of breaks. Now, when you get to an overbought condition, it's difficult in an overbought. As soon as you're out of that, either embedded or just away from overbought, it gets a different way of trading. Um, and that's how I use slow stochastics. Some people, and by the way, slow stochastics work one of the best ways when you have channel type trading that is working. When you get the spike trade, that's where RSI works a little bit better. When you look at the uh, micro mini NASDAQ, you've got a lower and low, a higher high in the June. You're playing games at the 18 day average. Momentum is still pointing down. This market's not as strong as the S&P is at this point. In the Dow, well, you played at the 18 day average. You're now starting to come back up to the upside as you can see. Resistance is the Bollinger Band. Will the market be able to pump through it tomorrow or not? You know, that's what everybody's going to wait on. That 7.30 time frame, when these numbers come out, you'll see the algorithms take control of the market and you get fairly large moves often. And it, they're brief, but they can be nasty, real nasty, very quickly. And, uh, you know, a big surprise can make the, the game change and it's not as brief. Remember CPI on Tuesday? At first, it was all over the board. It took about two hours and then the market started rotating into the buy mode and it continued the rest of the day. But you go back and look at a 15 minute chart and you'll see all those moves that I'm talking about. In the Russell, it's the same thing, a higher high, lower and low, momentum down. But all of these markets have something in common. They're fighting their battles and succeeding to hold the 18-day average of closes and keep, at this point at least, a bullish bias in the market. And I'm going to point out something. We haven't had a, a 3 to 5% correction. I, I, I heard somebody on CNBC say it's been 200 and some odd days. That's really long. I mean, it's happened before, but that's really long. So it gives you an idea. The other thing that hasn't happened, do you remember the inverted 210? And that was going to cause a recession. Where is it? And I, I know what I did. I kept saying, you can't have a recession. This is my opinion. I'm not the world's greatest economist. But I said, I don't believe you can have a, a recession with full employment. Full employment being defined three and a half, three point seven percent unemployment in the United States. In the UK, it's about four percent right now, and go on and on with the different countries. And that makes recessions very difficult to have. That doesn't mean the UK didn't enter one; they did. All right. So, is their number really four percent? Well, you can't compare the size of their economy or the output with the United States. We are unique. Do you remember when we heard China's going to overtake the United States and that the yuan was going to replace the dollar and everything's going to replace the dollar? Do you know how often in my career I have heard things like that that haven't materialized? It could happen. It just isn't now. Higher high, lower and low. Look at how you fell back to the support. And we just spoke about this. At the 100-day average, the 18 is next. And the question is, yes, it got ahead of itself. It stopped right where it should. And it got thrown back. And it stepped out of the uptrend where it had this whole pattern of higher lows, higher highs. And it stepped out off the CPI report yesterday. In the five-year, it's the same thing. You phased in and now you're back down right now. You're sitting here at the 18-day um, average of closes. And have we ended that uptrend? Yes, you have. Remember I said to you just the other day, because it was the March contract we were looking at, I said, you're fighting your battle between the 100-day and the upper Bollinger Band, but you're being restrained each time by this. And today, that restraint finally gave way. But you're not trending. You're whipping back and forth over the past 72 hours, and I expect another whip in the morning because of the PPI. In the dollar, this is the June now. Lower highs, lower lows. It is oversold. I view anything in the slow stochastics that's under a 30 reading and not embedded oversold. So if the euro, if that's doing that, what's the euro? Overbought. And its battleground has been the 200-day average to the upper Bollinger Band. Now, you're getting a bullish crossover tonight. The 18-day average is just now in the evening trade getting over the 100-day. 
I still look at this as bullish. I look at the dollar is overall bearish. In the British pound, you got overbought. You're correcting it at this point. But the overall trend is up. If the market does take out the 127.50 level, then maybe you can get back to the 18-day average. But the bulls have control temporarily of that market. Bitcoin, as long as the embedded reading stays in place, I look for higher prices. And yes, I look for the market to have great trouble staying over the upper Bollinger Band. Moving to the right-hand side is where I think it belongs. Then we look at the energies, Brent versus WTI. Suddenly Brent's getting a bit stronger. And that's what I'm seeing has been leading bull markets. It's when the Brent gets stronger than the WTI. You're fighting at that Bollinger Band top and you are overbought. You're doing the identical thing in WTI. The differential between the two says Brent is leading the way. In gasoline, I think we now know that the 257 level, 260, is the zone that traders have great interest in this market for the spring summer uh, a buying zone. That's what I'm thinking is happening there. And in that gas, I have had my clients bearish this market. Uh, but I think we're now getting into a, a point in time where you want to be stepping away temporarily from this because you're approaching that lower Bollinger Band and you've had a heck of a move. You've come down here from the $2 level back into the low 170s. So it's time to be a bit cautious as I read it, maybe pulling some money off the table. Wouldn't surprise me. So let's talk about what we have. My research. Twice a day, Monday through Thursday, I put out two updates a day, sometimes three, special updates included. And I'll write what I see, and I write it in such a way that it's easy for you to see. I put out trade recommendations to look in green and red. I will write with bullet points, headlines, and small paragraphs. Why? I want to make points to you all the way through. Then I back everything up with videos because the charts tell the story. As much as I want to make a point, I can do that as I write and I give you the red book and I give you ideas. That's how this all looks. My idea is I got very tired of reading long newsletters. I can read Barron's on a weekend, but during the week I am too busy. I want to get right to the points that make importance to me and I want to make that important to you. And how do I do it? Well, I want to give it to you free. Can I be simpler? I don't want a credit card or any of that. If you haven't tried it, get, I'll go to irapstein.com under free offers. Move your cursor up here. You can do it that way as well. You'll see it's, it'll take you there. And away you go. Let me start dropping that in your mailbox and you decide, do you like it? And that's your email box, of course. I'm Ira. I will catch you in the morning as I review the PPI numbers with you. If you have other questions, call my staff. You have a great day.